Good morning, beautiful people. I hope that you are having a wonderful day today. Today, you and I are going to dive into Enneagram Gilmore Girls together. Grab your coffee, let's get started. Today as well, you and I are going to dive a little bit into the iPad world because I think it is important to give the context for what I'm going to say and the resource that I used in learning about Enneagram myself is the Enneagram Institute, not in any way sponsored, but I will put a link to the book below in regards to that Amazon you get the drill. Enneagram overall, if you're unaware of it, that's totally fine. It's basically kind of like another personality type test, but the reason that I like this test better than other personality types is because one, it's not really a test. Like I did take a test and then worked my way through that, but really what you're supposed to do is read the book, read through all of the types, and then kind of self-diagnose the type. There's also a great creator that did songs about it. There's a lot of people that have dived into this type of a world. It's a little bit different than like the Myers-Briggs side of things because this, I like that it talks about you in health and you basically not in health. Like basically you at your best and then you, if you're not careful, at your worst. And that is a good balance for not only learning about yourself, but even about communicating with others. So that being said, let's dive into our first category, character, all of that, Lorelai Gilmore. Lorelai Gilmore, I would type, which is also something that you're not supposed to do, by the way, but these are fictional characters and they can't type themselves, so somebody's gotta do it. If it's not me, then who? So, actually the who is you. So if you, one, if you know your type, put your type down below, because I'm very interested in that. Two, if you think, because there's a few of these that kind of have like, could be this or could be that type. If you have a very strong opinion on that, if it should be A type or B type, please let me know in the comments. Back to Lorelai. Lorelai Gilmore, I would type as a seven wing eight, which is the seven is the enthusiast and the eight is the challenger. The reason that I think Lorelai is a seven is because seven is basically always the life of the party. The type seven in brief, sevens are extroverted, optimistic, versatile, and spontaneous. If that doesn't describe our girl Lorelai, I don't know what does. Also playful, high spirited, and practical. Sometimes she's very practical and sometimes she's not practical at all, but that's also very seven of her to be that. They can also misapply their many talents, become overexerted, scattered, and undisciplined. The key motivations of a type seven is wanting to maintain their freedom and happiness, to avoid missing out on worthwhile experiences, to keep themselves excited and occupied, and to avoid and discharge pain. I definitely think Lorelai is a seven wing eight. Wing eights also, let's go to the eight. The eight is the challenger. The basic fear of the challenger is being harmed or controlled by others. And the basic desire is to protect themselves. One of the things about the eight that I've heard is that they have a very like soft heart, but there's a lot of proving yourself almost to be able to be vulnerable in that way. Like if you have an eight in your life, you kind of have to dive through all of these aspects of them to get to them, if that makes sense. I'm counting on y'all knowing Enneagram. If you don't, please, please learn about it, come back, discuss, have a party, you know? We're gonna get a little bit deep into this because there's like a seven in health and a seven in stress, which is the seven in health or growth goes to a five and then in stress goes to a one. So ones are very black and white with yes or no, right or wrong, this or that. And then fives are very curious people, very smart, very intellectual, very wanting to know how the mechanism works. So I always love that the seven grows to a five because that bubbly and vibrant personality can also translate. L let's actually read it. Sevens at their best assimilate experiences in depth, making themselves deeply grateful and appreciative for what they have, becoming awed by the simple wonders of life, joyous and ecstatic, ecstatic. Intimations of spiritual reality, of the boundless goodness of life. That just reminds me of when Lorelai is truly her best in the relationships at work. That I feel like that's very her, taking the simple moments of joy and just kind of bringing that to those around her. I think it's a very, she, I would also say she's the extroverted version of this. I think there's extroverted and introverted versions. Lorelai, I would definitely convince everybody, if I can, that she's an extrovert. And then I would say Rory's an introvert, even though a lot of times she will kind of be extroverted in things. But Lorelai, I would say is a seven wing eight by far. Rory Gilmore. Now we are already into the fact that I am a little wishy-washy on Rory. Previously in the video, I believe I said I thought Rory was a one. Now after doing some more research, I think Rory could be a five. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let's read about both of them. Type five is the investigator. The investigator is the intense cerebral type. Perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Or one, the rational idealistic type. 
principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionist. I kind of see both of these in Rory. I don't know. I'm leaning more towards the five because she is pretty introverted. She definitely does have those like very, like, like her goal is to be a journalist. She wants to be somebody that is kind of in her own world, doing the research, looking up the things, finding out what's going on. The five's basic fear is being useless, helpless, or incapable and their desire is to be capable and competent. I would agree with that for Rory. I feel like especially at the beginning of the series, we don't really see her having that confidence and she definitely sees that in Lorelai. How are you so confident in yourself? And I think part of that's just being a teenager for sure because you're like, I don't know, it's just like weird. Like you're just half of not a kid. You're not a girl, not yet a woman. If you know, you know. One thing I will say about this as well is if you go really far into it, like the really, really unhealthy levels, it gets pretty dark. So just kind of know that going in. Like maybe if you're not in the best mental place, maybe don't read like the most unhealthy version of you because that's like, like the most unhealthy version. So typically when I'm reading like an unhealthy version, I'll read like a level five or like a level six because that feels more kind of like every day I'm just not having the best day versus I'm like in a pit. So just know that as well. So if we're gonna read an unhealthy version of somebody, I'm probably reading a five or a six. So for an Enneagram five, their level five of health is increasing detached as they become involved with complicated ideas or imaginary worlds, becoming preoccupied with their visions and interpretations rather than reality. I think that that's kind of Rory with books. I think she uses books, one, as a learning tool, which is fantastic. And that's like the best part about the five as well. But a lot of times, in our own lives like the best thing about us can easily fall to be like a rough thing about us this is a deeper video than i had planned on but <laughs> the best thing about the five is they're visionaries broadly comprehending the world while penetrating it profoundly open-minded taking things in whole in their true context making pioneering discoveries and find entirely new ways of doing and perceiving things or the reformer the key motivations of a type one is they want to be right to strive higher and improve everything to be consistent with their ideals, to justify themselves, to be beyond criticism so as not to be condemned by anybody. That very much so describes early Rory. Like she was always the rule follower and not really, like her basic fear is being corrupted or defective. The basic desire is to be good and have integrity to be balanced. The ones at their best become extraordinarily wise and discerning. By accepting what is, they become transcendently realistic, knowing the best actions to take in each moment. Humane, inspiring, and hopeful. The truth will be heard. And that also lends itself to Rory. So, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know what Rory's wing is because it can't necessarily decide on her type. I would say somewhere between a five and one, but you can't have like, like the wings are the numbers that are around you. So I don't know on Rory. She could be either of these. I could see her being both of these. In unhealth, I could also see her being both of these as well. Just either like, I'm just gonna go party and ignore everything, but I'm just gonna go do whatever and there are no rules and I'm gonna steal a boat because I'm not perfect. Or somebody said I wasn't perfect. So next, Emily and Richard. Now I believe Emily is a one wing two, which according to the website is the advocate. So once again, ones, their key motivation is to be right, to strive higher and improve everything, to be consistent with their ideals, to justify themselves, to be beyond criticism, so as to not be condemned by anyone. Emily very much so tells Lorelai all the things that she should do and all the things that she should not do which in not health is something that ones can do. I mean, two is the helper. So the helper's basic desire is to feel loved. And then Richard is a nine, which is the peacemaker. Now you might not specifically first think of this as Richard, but then when we dive into it, I think it'll make some more sense. So the nine is accepting, trusting, and stable. They're usually creative, optimistic, and supportive, but can also be too willing to go along with others to keep the peace. They want everything to go smooth and without conflict, but they can also tend to complicate, simplify problems and minimize anything upsetting. I think Richard very much so. Another aspect of the nine is when they make up their mind, they like make up their mind and that's what they're doing. And I think we see that a lot in Richard when it comes to his business. Once he decides, okay, I'm going to retire, he just does it. Once he decides, okay, I'm going to, in order to save the business and protect the family and keep the peace in my world, I'm willing to sue Digger. Like he doesn't seem to want to get in the middle of any of the fights between Lorelai and Emily. And I think that's an aspect for himself of keeping the peace. So the basic fear of the nine is loss and separation. And the basic desire is to have peace of mind. That feels very Richard to me. It feels very much so like he just wants his world to be happy. He wants to do his thing. Y'all can do whatever you want to do over there 
but I'm gonna be good over here. The type nine in a relationship with the type one. These types understand each other from the inside as it were, and for better or worse, can see many of their own traits in the other. I think that lends itself to the fact that Emily basically, we, we see this more so in the reboot, and I'm not super in all of this talking about the reboot, but Emily's my favorite character in A Year in the Life or the reboot or whatever you wanna call it. And I think that she very much so gets sucked into Richard's world and Gilmore and all of that. Not that she didn't have that before because she knew the life that she was choosing, but I do think she she became more of him than she thought she was going to, which is interesting as a one, but also it's a husband wife relationship. So that's a little different too. On the positive side, each type brings a certain idealism and desire to change the world to make it a better place. Nines bring a more interpersonal orientation than ones due to their idealism. Agree. I think Richard's more, like I think Emily's very connected, but I think Richard's probably more well liked than Emily and maybe Emily in her best is a very inspiring character in like planning events and doing things in the DAR. But I think you can see that the girls kind of, it almost feels sometimes like they favor Richard over Emily and like, oh, grandpa, but then like grandma's bothering me. And I wonder if part of that's because Richard's more like, hi, I'm just over here just having a little party. And then Emily's like, no, you should be doing this. Thoughts. I'll, I'm happily gonna read all of them. Luke Dane's Enneagram Type 6, The Loyalist. Type 6 in brief, the committed, secure oriented type. Very much so, Luke. Sixes are reliable, hardworking, responsible, and trustworthy. That doesn't describe our man Luke. I don't know what else does. He very much so, in my opinion, is a six. Him and Lorelai, for some reason, which I, I will go into their compatibility here in a second, but they were the easiest people for me to be like, oh, obviously Lorelai is a seven. Oh, obviously Luke is a six because their characters are so strong in those types. And the six, the loyalist, I don't even know if I have to describe it to you because I think as soon as you heard it, you were just like, oh, obviously. The six has the basic fear of being without support or guidance and the basic desire to have security and support. I think that he just wants to be there for people. He wants to support like Jess. He wants to be there for Jess. He wants to be there for his sister. He wants to be there for Lorelai, even after they've broken up and then she calls and she's upset, he still comes because he, he he is there to support. He is there to be loyal. He actually really does care even though he's hurting and drama at that time. Now let's look at the compatibility of a six and a seven. Both Enneagram sixes and sevens are mental types. A whole nother world. We're skipping that for now. These two types offer many areas in which they reinforce each other. In some areas, in which strengths of one counterbalance the limitations of the other. Sevens are usually entertaining and tend to lift the spirits of the sixes. Both are quick mentally and often they enjoy bantering with each other, verbally sparring and seeing how absurd or funny they can become as they push each other to more outrageous limits. Sevens are particularly good at generating new ideas while sixes are particularly good at mastering the practical steps that are necessary to get things done. Sevens help sixes put fears and limitations into perspective and sometimes to move beyond them entirely. They thus make effective team members in which the seven lays out the big picture and gets people excited about the new possibilities while the six moves in with logic and tactical know-how following through in the details. That is their relationship. I don't really know what else to say in that because that is just so perfectly Luke and Lorelai, how he's kind of this stable, strong figure and Lorelai is just like out there living her best life and how they kind of balance each other in that way. He brings the practical to her. She brings like the whimsy and fun. Couldn't have said it better. Paris, Lane, and Jess, the type four. Totally kidding. Paris is a hard eight. I just thought that would be funny. Uh, if you know Enneagram, it probably just caused a visceral reaction. So sorry about that. I do think both Jess and Lane are fours though. And here's why. The type four's basic fear is that they have no identity or personal significance. And their basic desire is to find themselves in their significance to create an identity. Basically, they're like the artists of the group. They're the ones that like the most four four is Jess. The most like eight eight is Paris. So if you're unaware of Enneagram in its totality, those are very good examples of that type. We have named this type the individualist because fours maintain their identity by seeing themselves as fundamentally different from others. True. Fours feel that they are unlike any other human beings and consequently that no one can understand them or love them adequately. Jess. They often see themselves as uniquely talented, possessing special one-of-a-kind gifts, but also as uniquely disadvantaged or flawed at their best. They are profoundly creative, expressing the personal and the universal, possibly in a work of art, or you know, a book or a band. As a bonus, here's a few more rapid style. Logan, three. Mrs. Kim, one. Taylor Dosey, 
one. Suki, two. I think wing three. Mitchum Huntsberger, eight. Unhealthy eight. Kirk, four. Wing three. Very entrepreneurial. TJ, hard seven. If you would like a Myers-Briggs version of this, please let me know that in the comments. Outside of that, have a wonderful day, drink your coffee, and I'll see you next time. Bye.